Hana, thanks for joining me. Yeah, you're welcome anytime. So, Hana, tell us something about Rachel Corey. What was her legacy, her early life, and what led to her death? Yeah, basically, uh, she was uh, uh, part of international solidarity movement, mm-hmm. which is a Palestinian-led uh, movement. Right. And uh, they were basically going uh, to uh, Palestine to protect Palestinians from Israeli brutality, mm. including, you know, uh, school children going to their schools. They used to uh, accompany them for safety and, you know, uh, try to stop uh, house demolitions. Among other things, you know, they used to, um, um, you know, do uh, uh, human rights work inside Palestine. Right. Actually, uh, in Vancouver, we had uh, uh, a group, uh, you know, a branch for international solidarity movement. Mm-hmm. And I'd say at least 15 uh, British Columbians went with them to witness uh, what's happening on the ground there. And that was uh, uh, at the beginning of 2000. Right. Uh, you know. refused to send uh, UN monitors to Palestine. Uh, that's another story. Canada played a part in defeating that resolution in December 2000 at the Security Council. They were members then hmm. uh, by not voting with sending, uh, uh, you know, uh, monitors uh, to witness there. Right. But, uh, you know, she was doing her job hmm. there. Palestine, and she was in Gaza, in Rafah, mm-hmm. to be specific. And they they wanted to bulldoze a, a doctor's, a Palestinian doctor's house. Right. And she was standing in front of the house uh, with, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, vest, you know, fluorescent vest uh, that uh, you can't miss, you know. And mm-hmm. you could see some picture showed her, uh, showed the driver of the bulldozer, uh, you know, and in, in she, she was in his uh, and their sight, uh, uh, you know, but uh, they they went over her and killed her with the bulldozer. Hmm. There is uh, gruesome uh, photos for the event uh, right. on, on the internet, right. but that's what happened. They co- killed her in cold blood because she was trying to hmm. protect the house from demolition. Absolutely. Uh, she succeeded. <laughs> after her death, but mm. uh, at uh, high cost, and she she is uh, from Olympia, uh, here in uh, US. in Washington, from right. Washington State, a uh, few hours from drive from uh, Vancouver. Um, the, the the this happened, uh, you know, during uh, in March uh, 16 when uh, she was killed, mm. and uh, we, I remember we. After that, the uh, Iraq war happened, the Iraqi ag- U.S. aggression against Iraq. And we had a, a you know, presence in downtown in front of the American embassy, like a camp. And we, we set up, a, 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 you know, a commemoration uh, presence inside the camp for mm. her. Uh, as long as uh, they allowed the camp to continue during the Iraq war. They shut it down eventually. The city took over uh, the camp, the anti-war camp there. Uh, the, the, the anti-war movement allowed us to set up, you know, this uh, commemoration uh, presence at the camp. Right. So th- that's that's basically what happened. It was a cruel... Uh, and, you know, the objective was to deter uh, foreigners and, uh, you know, uh, non-Palestinians who come to show solidarity with the Palestinian people from coming anymore because the, the movement was growing and they were trying to shut her down. Mm. They, they shot many others. Uh, they killed the uh, British and they injured another uh, uh, another American uh, mm. uh, uh, p- 
person mm. who was uh, also in, who came within the international solidarity movement to Palestine. We we hosted them here mm. uh, with the uh, Rachel Corey, mm. um, you know, uh, with the Rachel Corey's parents. Right. His name is uh, Brian Avery, and uh, you know we we had a meeting for. Uh, him and uh, the Rachel Corey par- parents, mm. Cindy and Craig Corey, uh, in Vancouver, I believe it was in 2014. Mm. But before that, we hosted uh, Rachel Corey's parents, Cindy and Craig, uh, uh, two other times. We hosted them all together three times, the, mm. the Corey's parents, Rachel Corey's parents. One just eight months after she was murdered, we hosted her at the hosted them at the uh, Palestine Community Center in 2003, mm. and also we hosted them in 2012 here in Vancouver, uh, and they were quite uh, effective, uh, um, you know, uh, voices for their uh, daughter. Uh, they continued her legacy, they, mm. uh, and they established. Uh, Rachel Corey's foundation that still exists till now right. and still do uh, work, humanitarian work, in Rafah, where she was killed, uh, Rafah uh, in the Gaza Strip. Right. Uh, is a town, uh, Rafah is a town in the Gaza Strip where she was killed protecting the doctor's house. Right. So that's basically uh, general, uh, in general uh, about her. But uh, her memory lives with us uh, for forever. Right, definitely. Now, now, what happened to that case? I mean, after her death, were, were there any kind of punishment uh, given to the people involved? Yeah, um, they, 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 they tried to um, take them to court hmm. in the U.S., but they, they refused there because they said they should go through the Israeli system. Again, the U.S. is a, is an unconditional supporter of Israel with all right. its institutions. So they took them to the court, and they had many courts and appeals and etc. Et inside the Israeli courts. We actually interviewed them a few times on the Voice of Palestine when it was still on the air. Mm. People, but still, I mean, our website still exists, the Voice of Palestine. .ca, so people, if they want to uh, see their interview where they talked about their agony of trying to get justice to their daughter, they could find, uh, I'm not sure, one or two or maybe more on the Voice of Palestine. That just search the website uh, under their name, uh, Rachel Corey or, uh, or Cindy and Craig Corey, and you'll have some interviews with them. I did interview them personally on the Voice of Palestine. But, you know, uh, they, they get nowhere from the Israeli justice, so-called justice right. <laughs> system, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, her, uh, they, she, she never get, uh, mm. uh, you know, her uh, justice from Definitely. Israeli courts, nor from the American political system. Right. Now, let's talk about your letter-writing campaign, which is directed at the Premier of uh, British Columbia, in terms of uh, your demand asking for the ban on Israeli wine? Yeah. Actually, we released it just uh, uh, Friday afternoon or mm. evening, the, the letter. Right. And it's already got over 600 uh, um, letters that have been written to the B.C. government. Right. Uh, uh, it's, it's really outrageous what's happening. I mean, the this... Um, with the Ukraine, right. uh, the uh, intervention of the Russians in Ukraine exposed lots of, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, hypocritic and double mm. standard, and not just uh, here in uh, BC, but all over the world. Mm. I mean, uh, the, the even, you know, some, I don't know if you heard it today, the uh, speaker of the uh, Kuwaiti parliament, uh, in in uh, interparliamentary uh, meeting, they asked to uh, uh, suspend or uh, kick out the Russian uh, members. So he told them, uh, you know, before you do that, you should kick out the Israeli parliamentarian from this house. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the 
said we were forbidden to talk about any political issue, but since FIFA allowed, uh, you know, people to talk about uh, politics and sports, you know, mm. when, uh, we should not just talk about Ukraine, we should talk about all oppressed people all over the world, and let's start with Palestine. Right. So it, it showed clear hypocrisy on the part of, of the world in general, the Western world. I won't say the world, because they are not the world. They, they just the Western world, because most people who <coughs> witnessed and were under the oppression, whether it's uh, U.S. imperialism or uh, British colonialism, uh, know <laughs> what it's uh, all about, right. that it's a double standard and hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And when they talk about human rights, they don't mean the colored people. They mm -hmm. don't mean the people in the third world or in the uh, global south. They mean, you know, the white people. And they showed that, uh, you know, this was very clear, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the blue eyes and the white thing comments by reporters, uh, Western reporters, and even even uh, what's his name, the Prince Charles, not Charles, uh, uh, Prince, uh, uh, what's his name, the other guy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, uh, the British, uh, uh, British, uh, right. uh, William, Prince William, yeah, mm. I just remembered his name, who, who basically said, uh, you know, uh, this can't happen uh, in our uh, uh, backyard. We are uh, uh, basically civilized people, mm. and you know uh, the lives uh, of uh, black and brown uh, doesn't count. And he was mm. dehumanizing the lives of these by saying it's, it shouldn't happen. Uh, we 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 shouldn't have such a thing in our backyard here in, mm. in Europe. Although, you know, I mean, uh, everybody knows the most devastating wars in the world happened in Europe, uh, World War I, World War II, and then they attacked uh, Yugoslavia, you know. I mean, this, this is not far from our memory when they attacked Yugoslavia, and the victims of these wars were no comparison uh, compared to the other wars in the world that basically were initiated by the West, you know, whether in uh, in Vietnam, whether in uh, Syria, whether in Iraq, whether in Afghanistan, you name it, in South America, uh, in Africa, you know, all these interventions by the West that led to these wars, they, they are the most vicious em right. empire in the world. Uh, right. First, the British Empire, and I'm sure you are aware of it, <laughs> when right. they, they colonized uh, yeah. India, the same, uh, you know, with the uh, uh, new uh, world empire, the U.S. Yeah. empire that has no mercy. They talk about human rights and democracy, and in effect, they are uh, exploiting the world, uh, the, the resources, and exploiting the people also. Absolutely. And, they, they, you know, uh, I just remember when the Iraqi war happened, you know, before that there was the sanctions on Iraq, and over one million Iraqis were dead. And when the uh, Leslie Stoll, a uh, CBS reporter, asked Madeleine Albright, who used to be the, um, you know, the Secretary of State, uh, the Foreign Minister, basically, of the United Absolutely. States, when she asked her, uh, during these sanctions, half a million Iraqi children who were uh, died due to the sanctions. Uh, was it worth it? And she answered her immediately, it was worth it. So uh, murdering half a million Iraqis uh, was worth it for the empire. Mm. We, they talk about human rights. What kind of human rights they are talking about here? Again, uh, you asked me about the BC uh, petition. Mm. I'll go back to it. I was trying to, right. to, to give the general. It's not uh, That's only fine. <laughs> BC. But the BC, it's hurting because they supposedly an NDP government, supposedly a progressive government, with a resolution that stated very clearly, last year they passed a resolution, that uh, they should, they, uh, all, and I'm quoting, all trade and economic cooperation with illegal settlement in 
Israel Palestine uh, that shouldn't be dealt with basically that was part of the resolution and here is a, a, an NDP government still dealing with uh, products from these illegal settlements mm-hmm. we've been campaigning for 14 years for God's sake and they won't uh, take the Israeli wine from the shelves of the BC liquor stores while two days after the uh, Russia uh, went into Ukraine, two days only, they took all uh, uh, Russian liquor from the um, uh, liquor stores. Uh, they told us it's a consumer choice. That, that's why they are allowing Israeli mm. uh, uh, settlement uh, in the liquor stores. They, they, you know, they were lying, really, uh, straight face lying in your face. They were lying. You know, while, you know, what about the people who drink vodka? Uh, don't they have a consumer choice? Obviously, it was politically motivated. And obviously, you know, this, this NDP party is nothing but a puppet for mm-hmm. U.S. imperialism, mm-hmm. nothing but a, a puppet for the Western interests, nothing but a puppet for the multinational corporations. And I think we better wake up and smell the coffee. We need a new progressive party in this country. And, you know, I address people of conscience that this is a real agency. We need a new party. We don't want to stay with the status quo, with the pro uh, corporate uh, and racist uh, parties that they really look down upon Palestinians and colored people, and most importantly, upon indigenous people. Look what they did with the uh, oil uh, pipeline right. that's taking uh, uh, indigenous land fr- from them uh, in, uh, by force, you know. Uh, but they send the RCMP to, to uh, quell their protest. So we really uh, urgently, after this hypocrisy and double standards, we need a a really genuine progressive and socialist party Hmm. to be established here in Canada. Well, Hannah, it was nice talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. These are all developing stories. Just keep us posted and keep up your good work. Talk to you again. Yeah, thank you, Gurpeet. And really, we urge uh, people, uh, you know, to go to to our website and sign our petition and tell BC government to pull Israeli apartheid wine now okay. and uh, you know we have uh, already over 600 uh, signatures and uh, it'll be good if you support palestine and human rights please do so and thanks again Gurpeet, for hosting me anytime take care bye for now